on the eve of Game 5 and after yet another solid performance in Game 4, I find myself saying one thing over and over. Gustav Nyquist has more to offer the Wilds. We talk about how he can help the Wild tonight in Game 5 on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any of our new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off of your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we'll talk about some ways that Gustav Nyquist can help the Wild here in Game 5 tonight. We'll talk about uh, potential for him to get elevated on special teams as well as in the lineup as well. And we will circle in on three players, three people we need to see more from here in Game 5 tonight. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. Game 5 this evening, we're tied at 2-2. And I think some of the things that we can pull having now had a day to just kind of distance from game four and from what we've seen so far in this series is that outside of the, uh, the game two, which the wild were in uh, four to three at one point before the stars pulled away, the wild have been in every game so far in this series. And that's no exception for game four. They were in it all the way up until the end. It just came down to some missed opportunities for uh, for the Wilds against Jake Ottinger, which is why I think we're now starting to see some of what we had expected to see. There doesn't appear as though there are going to be any lineup changes. Philip Gustafson, it appears, is going to be in net. And so you have that same nucleus of players. You got your same starting goaltender. And if you're the Minnesota Wilds, you really, I think feel good about where things are at obviously again missed opportunity in game four with a a couple of uh of chances that probably well point blank you do have to find a way to score on especially early in the game and so you're not in a situation where you have to really i think hit the panic button and make some major changes but i do find myself and i know other people that cover this team as well I find myself again after game four saying, I just, I feel like Gustav Nyquist has more that he can offer this team. Nyquist has four assists through the four games so far. He's got four points and it seems like he does things in every single game that are valuable for this team. So huge kudos to Bill Guerin again for making that trade, but it might be time to see what more Gustav Nyquist has to offer this team. He played 12 minutes in game four, and you're in a situation in the postseason where for the Wilds, you need more from your key guys. We'll talk about that coming up later on in the show, but you don't want to get into a situation where you look back and you say, boy, I wish we would have seen more of, of Gustav Nyquist. And so there are two spots, I think, in which Nyquist can help you out. Number one, being a bump up in the lineup. We all know it's been a rough go for Matt Zuccarello uh, over the last uh, probably month plus. He had the great performance in game three, but went back to what we have seen throughout the series and just was holding the puck too much, not shooting enough. And for a team that left some shots and left some goals on the table in game four. You got to see players step up and, uh, and put the puck on the net because as we talked about, as the everydayers know from yesterday's episode, you're not going to beat 
Jake Ottinger with the first shot that you put on the net because Jake Ottinger excels in getting to his spot, anchoring and blocking shots. So what you need to do is you need to up your volume of shots and be in position to capitalize on rebounds. And so looking for the perfect shot and trying to find a way to wedge one through just is not going to cut it against a, a goalie, the caliber of Jake Ottinger. So you need to see players shoot the puck more. And you look at the lineup. We see Kaprizov, Hartman, Zuccarello. If even with what we've seen from Zuccarello recently, if you're not in a position where you want to bump him lower in the lineup, that's fine. But how about we do something a little out of the box? Second line of Matt Boldy, Sam Steele, and Marcus Johansson. It was a situation in game four where you notice Boldy, you notice Johansson, and that's those are the main two that you notice on that line. We saw after the injury to Jewel Erickson Eck in game three, we saw Matt Boldy play center a lot in that game. And so what would be wrong with throwing Gustav Nyquist on that second line at a wing spot, putting Matt Boldy at center, and then having Marcus Johansson on that line as well? Or here's some breaking news. Gustav Nyquist has the ability to play center himself. Marcus Johansson has played center. Uh, in his NHL career as well. The main thing is, is I think Gustav Nyquist is a playmaker, first and foremost. He has great vision on the ice. He's got some pretty darn good handles with the puck and uh, and with the stick. And I just, I feel like all of that would play. And if you are getting to a point in as the series goes, as you are upping the time on the ice, that you see your key guys, your Kirill Kaprizovs, your Matt Boldies, when you're finding ways to try to manufacture more ice time for them, if you put everybody into a, a, a column, like, okay, we need to get these guys more ice time, these guys can maybe go further down in the lineup, you got to put Gustav Nyquist, I think, in that category because he, he had... Uh, on the uh, Marcus Foligno power play goal, obviously his shot was deflected, but he, just look at the different assists that he's had throughout his wild tenure. A guy who has more points than games played as a member of the Minnesota Wild so far. He had a uh, a sensational uh, breakaway pass to uh, to set up a goal. I believe that was against the Chicago Blackhawks, but. Guy just sees the ice fantastically well. He is just, he's good in a lot of areas that I think could help this team. And so if we look at option one, which is to elevate him in the lineup, I think that's a prime spot to do it. And whoever ends up centering on that line, Boldy did it in game three, looked fine. Looked fine as the center in game three. So I think you just, you don't have to make major changes and this is a different conversation entirely if the wild get run off the ice in game four like if they lose that game five to one or something like that then yeah i'm i'm advocating for for some some lineup tweaks uh, more than tweaks but the fact that you lost three to two you came up just short and you had a bevy of opportunities especially early in that game you don't have to change a ton but i do think there's a difference between hoping that the top level guys will break out and also taking an opportunity to give a guy who deserves more ice time to maybe help in that case. Uh, Nyquist, you know, the, the metrics with Felino, with Goudreau, um, with Sunquist as well. The metrics lower in the lineup, even with Nyquist out there, not particularly good. And so. Put a guy in and see if he can help kind of get Matt Boldy going. See if he can get that top six going. That would be one thing that I would advocate um, for this team heading into tonight's game five is to just get Gustav Nyquist out there more. 
He played 24 minutes in game one, but that was a double overtime game. You got to find a way to get him three or four more minutes of ice time. That can be impactful, especially in situations where you basically get two more opportunities in this series. You get one more opportunity in this series to say, we're going to have to be better next game because let's say you lose game five. You can say, yeah, we got to tighten some things up. You can't say that after the next loss. So let's, let's get, let's get Nyquist some more opportunities. Now, if it's not going to be in the likes of an elevation in the lineup, I think he can help on special teams too. So we will discuss that as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. One of the things that I enjoy most about Indeed is that candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to U.S. Indeed data. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on, Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply, cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thanks for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Every day, as you can turn in tomorrow as we recap game five, we of course have the postcast tonight with Kevin Gorg after the game. So make sure you tune into both. We'll dive into all the specifics, win or lose, as to how the Wild do as this series unfolds. So, Gustav Nyquist, if we're not going to get him an elevated spot in the lineup, probably not a bad idea to give him a bump on special teams. That power play is. It, you got to make changes, I think. And I know the logic being you want your top playmakers to be the ones to make the plays. And so Zuccarello, Kaprizov, Boldy, probably out there by default. Um, John Klingberg, let's, let's talk about the power play a little bit from a defenseman standpoint. Because I've seen a lot of discussion as to, well, the reason that the power play is not excelling as much as it has been is because they don't have a good quarterback uh, as a defenseman. I disagree. I I don't think Klingberg has been the issue with this wild power play uh, that we've seen throughout this postseason. Number one, the forwards, the four words that are playing on that top unit are holding the puck way too long. That includes everybody on that list. Kaprizov, Boldy, Zuccarello, and whether it be Johansson or or who else, they're holding the puck too long. This stems from what we said in segment one. You're not going to beat Jake Ottinger with the first shot, so you may as well stop trying to force the perfect shot in, trying to wedge one in. You're not going to hit a hole in one, so you may as well try to hit the green and then nail the putt, to use a golf analogy. And so you need to see those guys shoot more and get in position for the rebounds. And so I don't think unless that changes, I don't think the defenseman on that group matters at all. So Klingberg as the top power play unit quarterback is, I I don't think that's a problem. Your top guys have to step up, shoot the puck and pounce on the rebounds. This is where not having Jewel Erickson Eck hurts. Yes. but. It's it's a group, too, that is it's pretty stationary. You've got Zuccarello on one side. You've got Boldy on the other. You've got Kaprizov behind the net. 
you have Klingberg on the blue line, and you have your rover in Marcus Johansson. So why not put Gustav Nyquist in that group if you're not going to be moving around a ton? Again, for the ice vision, for the passing ability that he has shown, why not give him a chance to mix it up with that top unit and uh, and try to try to help get that thing going? Because as we've seen, there are not going to be no penalties in this series. And so we've talked about the Wilds' need to stop going to the penalty box to limit the penalties. I don't think with how this series has gone, I don't think that's going to happen. So you need to shore up those penalty units because Dallas is going to take penalties, and so you need to capitalize on your power play. The Wild are going to take penalties too. And so not only do you need to elevate uh, the top power play unit to try to get that going but you gotta I I think you have to make some major changes on the penalty kill unit as well which is insane because game three looked great game three looked fantastic um, against that Dallas power play so let's see what Nyquist can do on that top unit as well. And whether that be demoting Zuccarello, maybe that is an ability to send him a little bit of a message too, is to say, we're taking you off of that top unit until you show otherwise that you're ready to take it back. So maybe that's a way to uh, to send him a little bit of a message while also not knocking him off of that top unit. But, and we're going to finish the show talking about this as well. This requires some of those game-to-game adjustments that we have not seen. And so um, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see what the lineup looks like for this one tonight. But even regardless of what the lineup looks like, what we see for adjustments in-game and uh, you know, period one to period two, period two to period three, that's an area that uh, that we can see some improvement in as well. And so short segment here, but we've got a long one to finish because we're going to talk about two players and a member of the staff. We need to pump it up a little bit here for game five. So we'll continue today's episode of Locked on Wild discussing those particulars after this. There is absolutely nothing as stressful as trying to order tickets the day of an event. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be this stressful, but don't worry. Game time is here to try to help out. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. I was checking the other day to look at tickets for game six at the XL Energy Center. So I went to game time, and before I even typed in Minnesota Wild, they said events near you. And I clicked, and there you have it, uh, tickets for Game 6 for uh, the Wild Stars series. You can forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Final segment of today's episode of Locked On Wilds. Once again, thanks for making Locked On Wilds your first listen each and every day. And a reminder: you can tune in to tonight's game between the wild and the stars all part of Sirius XM they carry live play by play for all MLB NBA NHL and NFL teams as well as uh, other college games as well so make sure that you tune in at 7 p.m. central tonight you can catch every face off of the Minnesota Wilds home broadcast team with Sirius XM on the SXM app just search wild we need to see a little more tonight from a few key guys on this team. Let's start with Matt Boldy. Boldy finished 
game four with zero shots. And part of what is happening needs to be attributed to the job that Pete DeBoer is doing at managing this series and trying to take away those top-level guys. But the problem is, is that you're into game five of this series and you have one goal apiece. You have one goal from Kirill Kaprizov and zero from Boldy. Now, last year, the problem was that it was only Kirill and nobody else. So we get the inverse of that here in this series. And for Boldy, it's a situation, too, of just being one of those step step up guys. We saw the ability for him to do it as he filled in for Kirill when he was out after uh, the injury against the Jets. We saw him take over for an entire month, an entire month of games in which he scored 13 goals in the month of March. Just completely took over. We also saw February with zero goals. And so for Matt Boldy, it's now time for him to help step up and to lead this series in the right direction. The Wilds have gotten through the first four games with a lot of depth scoring. But as this series draws to its close, that's the time in which your top players step up. That's when they're supposed to step up and supposed to shine. And Dallas is having similar conversations at this point with their top guys because Jason Robertson has one goal so far in this series. And so it's just an opportunity. It's an opportunity for Matt Boldy to step up and to have a pivotal role in not only game five, but also in game six, and if necessary, game seven. The Wild will need him to do that. So it just is as a mentality for the whole team. You have to increase the volume of shots on Jake Ottinger, and you have to increase the reaction to rebounds. The rebound reaction, as we're going to call it. You have to increase that tenfold. Shots on Ottinger, when he kicks the rebounds out, you got to be in position to pounce. And so for Matt Boldy, with whoever is is on his line with him, Boldy's got to be the guy on that line. Johansson is great at setting plays up, and we saw it in Game 3 where Boldy set up Johansson for a, uh, a just a circus goal. That, uh, that he was able to score on Ottinger. But what made that play successful as well? It's because Ottinger was on one side of the net and Johansson was able to move to the other and knock him off his spot. So we need to see more of that and we need to see Matt Boldy be the guy to step up for that second line. And that goes for Kirill Kaprizov as well. And I know Kirill is dealing with the injury that knocked him out in the regular season. He's dealing with some of the, uh, I think, lingering effects from those checks that he took in front of the net to the lower back. He is doesn't appear to be 100%. But again, it's, as, it's the same thing with Matt Boldy. This is the time in the postseason in which the biggest stars take the brightest stage and make something happen. And so... Perfect time here in game five as well to just step up and to just write a chapter. We had the Marcus Foligno game or the Matt Zuccarello game, depending on which you prefer, in game three. Game four was the Jake Ottinger game. Would love the opportunity to say that game five was the Kirill Kaprizov game. And he's done it before. He had a hat trick in last year's postseason. So it doesn't even need to be a hat trick. It just needs to be one of those games... And not to say that he's not doing it because he is still impacting the game while not um, while not scoring. He's facing a ton of attention from the stars as well. But now's the perfect opportunity here in game five to write a chapter. Write a chapter, add a page to the Minnesota Wild lore. Uh, with a dominant performance. 
And the final person that I would like to see a little bit more from is Dean. Because I, I understand going from game four to game five. I get it. The Wild didn't, they didn't get run out of the building. That was a close game that came down to a couple of missed opportunities. And by and large, the Wilds in five on five have held a sizable advantage throughout this series. And yet we're tied at 2-2 because problems on special teams, but also problems of in-game decision-making. I heard this brought up on uh, Judd's Hockey Show heading down to the X um, before Game 4 on Sunday. Game 3 was the best that we've seen in terms of in-game adjustments by Dean Evison, I think probably since some points during the regular season. It may be one of the better games that he's had in terms of in-game management, but why is that? It's because Jewel Erickson Eck got hurt, and so the Wilds, went into that game expecting to be able to roll three lines, and that opportunity did not present itself. So you see Kirill Kaprizov getting rolled with, I think he ended up playing with everybody um, by the time the game was all said and done. And so some of that in-game management, it's okay to have a plan of attack heading into a game. And we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. But if the postseason has shown us anything, it's that those plans, by and large, don't end up working. So you have to be able to, based off of feel of how the game's going on, you have to be able to say late in the game, this would be a normal shift for our third line, but I'm starting to really get the sense that this game is there for the taking. And so we got to roll, we got to roll the top guys. We got to take this opportunity and grab it or we need one right now. Kirill, Boldy, Johansson, go. It's the in-game stuff. And this is, I think, what has been one of the rubs about Dean is that you get the game plan and... There really isn't a lot of deviation from it. But again, it's the postseason. What was the biggest gripe last year against the St. Louis Blues was the lack of adjustments. The Wilds, after Craig Berube blended the whole thing, after Berube blended everything that the Blues had done to get to that point in the postseason, the Wild didn't, they, they didn't have an answer. So let's see what happens here in game five. But again, you have to be willing to deviate off of schedule depending on how the situation presents itself. Uh, by the sounds of it, though, it sounds like Philip Gustafson is starting in game five tonight. That's, a, that's the right call. That's the right decision. Uh, Gustafson has already saved over three goals above expected in this series. He's he's essentially saving you one goal per game so far in this postseason series. And so going back to him in game five, absolutely the right call. So props to Dean Evison for that one, because I think there was a lot of speculation as to maybe we get Marc-Andre Fleury here in game five. That would not have been the right call. So Props to Dean. Props also to Dean for the decision to start Brock Faber in this series. Faber has been really, really solid, really good, great even uh, in this series so far. So props to Dean for going that route. And so Dean has, we've seen willingness to do some things that probably didn't occur in last year's postseason. So we're seeing some adjustments. We got to see a little more. And so that's what it comes down to here in game five. Just continue to dominate uh, stretches of five on five play. But on the on the special teams, 
You have to will yourself to penalty kills. You have to will yourself to not allowing the Stars to take a game over on special teams because you're on the road now. And so the physicality tends to go to the home team, uh, tends to favor them. So you're not going to play a perfect game in terms of being called for penalties. But you have to clamp down on special teams and just go out there and take one. We will have you covered after the game as well with a postcast with Kevin Gorg. We'll then set the scene for game six. We'll have a recap for you as well. Some of the particulars as to what happens in tonight's game five, but that will do it for today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Uh, Thank you for tuning in as always. Thank you for making Lockdown Wild part of your daily routine and your first listen each and every day. Seems like the audience continues to grow and grow. And so uh, if you have been listening all season, if you're one of the everydayers, uh, we thank you for, uh, for tuning in with us each and every step of the way. If you're new to the show, welcome. We hope you enjoy and we hope you stick around throughout uh, the postseason, throughout the offseason, uh, throughout everything. So uh, thank you for taking the time to listen. Make sure you subscribe if you have not already. Hit us up on YouTube or your favorite podcast platforms. And again, make sure to tune in for tonight's Lockdown Wild postcast as we recap all the action here from Game 5. We have new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.